Once comfortable, gently close your eyes and begin to take deep, refreshing breaths. Allow each breath to ease your mind and come into a still, focused state. Inhale deeply and exhale and let it all out. Turn inward and make yourself the first priority in this moment. As you continue to breathe, focus on the journey of your breath throughout your body. Notice how it feels as it weaves throughout your muscles with each inhale and how it relaxes you on each exhale. Allow your breath to ease any tightness you may be feeling. Breathing in deeply and letting it all go. When any judgments come up as they naturally will, acknowledge them and let them drift away. Replace any negative thoughts of self-criticism with loving ones and thank your body for supporting you in this moment. Inhale and exhale. Next, open your eyes and tune into the present moment. Look around you in this sacred space. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Just breathe and take in the fullness of this moment. Focus on your breathing, coming in and going out. Breathe deeply and let it all go. Invite some intention before the art. Practice non-judgment and acceptance. There's no right or wrong way. Just enjoy the process. Today, I give myself permission to create. I am clearing my mind and opening my heart for creativity. Today, I give myself permission to create. I am clearing my mind and opening my heart for creativity. Today, I give myself permission to create. I am clearing my mind and opening my heart for creativity. Breathing in deeply one last time and exhale, letting it all go. So we're going to start off with something really simple. We're going to start off with a circle and you can use your smaller brush or you can use a marker and you can just choose a color and and draw the circle with it. And this this exercise is to get you familiar with the colors and also with the materials. So the brush that I'm using now is the detailing brush and I use that for a lot of the smaller things like if I want to do anything fine or skinny or thin I use this brush also please keep in mind that our paintings are going to be different because you might want to choose a different color you're going to be making this own this is personal to you about how you're feeling today so I chose red because that's how I was feeling today and so then you can take um the next step which is to use lines and shapes and you can draw images or um, anything to describe um, your mood today and so I'm just putting lines around mine but of course you make yours how you think you feel today another thing to keep in mind is you want to clean your brushes off in between using each color so it doesn't carry on so for example I'm choosing to use black so I cleaned off my brush and then when I want to go back to red I cleaned off my brush and I just dip it into the water and then take the um, water off with the napkin. So this next tool is a plastic palette knife and it's primarily used to mix your paints. So you don't necessarily have to use your brushes. Um, you can use the palette knife. That's why it's called a palette um, knife to mix your paints. Um, I like to use it to like spread paint onto the canvas for texture and also um, it's like spreading like butter onto a canvas. So it gives you that different type of feel like um, for like backgrounds mostly too. So for the same thing goes for the palette knife. So if you want to change colors, then you just 
take the um, a napkin and just take off the excess paint on there and then change colors. And so I'm just filling in mine. I didn't necessarily paint objects. I just painted shapes and different um, like circles al along the way. So again, um, you can use for like the step three in that circle, you can use lines and shapes to draw an image or images to identify how you're feeling today. I guess for me, I was feeling a whole lots of things, lots of chaos. So that's why my painting looks like this too. And I'm also um, would like to show you guys some techniques. So here I use the end of my brush to dip the paint into, um, or dip the brush into the paint and put it onto the canvas. So it's just like different little things that you can do to make your, your painting um, unique. Um, here I will switch back to the uh, other end and just dash in along the way. So that's just some other things that you can do to um, do some things different with your painting. The next step in this prompt is to reflect and name your artwork. So for this one is power affirmation, and we're going to create a positive mindset and identify real life events that support your affirmations. This one is going to be really personal to you because you're going to choose an affirmation that is dear to your heart. So with a pencil or a marker, or you can even use your paint. You're going to write down your affirmation um, onto the, um, the canvas roll. And you can use um, thick letters, block letters, bubble letters, completely up to you. Um, and then if you don't know what an affirmation is, an affirmation is a positive and short statement designed to help in goal manifestation. So it could be, I am worthy. Um, I'm learning that it's okay to make mistakes. Um, I'm open to discovering new meaning of life. Just something that um, even if you're not quite there yet, it's something that the, something you strive to do or something um, how you see yourself or want to see yourself. That's what um, power affirmation is. That's what an affirmation is. And you can repeat it over and over again until it becomes true. Once you have your word, then I use the foam brush. The foam brush is for giving texture too. Like if you wanted to do um, something that looks like a tree, like a tree bush or Afro, uh, or you want to quickly cover the canvas and then you have those little spots in it. Um, the next one is the water. So I added some water at the top to give it um, like a water type of look or um, something that's kind of see-through or um, just something that you can paint over so you can kind of still see the word. So that's what the water is for and it helps stretch and thin out your paint to give it that lighter feel like a lower opacity. So that's what that water is for. Um, the detailing in the brush is just to insinuate some of the um, the outlines of the word is mostly just decoration and trying to make the word look pretty. Because what we're going to do with this after you've decorated it and made it look very beautiful, then we're going to hang it somewhere where you can see it, whether it's in your bathroom, next to your mirror, on your way out to work or for you to start your day, somewhere where that you can see it every single day. And then you're going to say it loud. I am worthy. 
That's me. I have value. I'm beautiful. I'm strong. You're going to say that with deep conviction. Like you notice this to be true. Positive thoughts generate positive feelings and attract positive life experiences. So what you put out is what you get. Positive energy only. So we're going to go over the bridge. First, we're going to sketch it out together. So I did a line in the middle of a line, a couple of inches on the left side. And I did it again on the right side. Next, we're going to draw a half circle that connects from the left all the way to the right. It's a half circle. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be adding paint to this. Then we're going to do another half circle. If that one's mostly like a, like a heel. And if you need to pause this, so that you can get the shape right, feel free to do that. That's a good thing about these videos. You can pause it, rewind it, and stop it as many times as you want so that you can get your, um, your sketch together. So I'm using a bigger plate for my, um, my mixing, and I'm using a brush. You don't have to use the palette knife to mix your paint. I like using the brush. And I'm doing a teal color, so I use blue and I use a white with a little bit of the yellow. And I'm going to paint my sky first. Again, this is your painting. We're just going to go ahead and do the bridge. Or, excuse me, we're going to do the, um, the background. And I'm using that wash brush because it's really good to cover big areas. So I'm taking the blue and then I added some white to it as I'm painting. And so I'm going to cover up the whole top part and paint around the bridge. And you also don't have to worry about being so perfect going around your sketch because we're going to fill that in with a different color and then we'll outline it. So don't have to worry too much about that. So I'm just going over it with the blue, um, making sure that that whole white part at the top is completely covered in paint. Also, keep in mind that this is my bridge. I'm giving you an example of how you can do this. So um, on the card, I did mention before starting this exercise, consider like what your bridge will be made from. So this is just an, an example. Um, and then so the next step after we've completely done the, the top part, then you'll move on to the um, the bottom part too as well and then i'm going to paint the whole whole thing and i'm going to leave the sides out once i get down to the bottom part where it's basically like water i'm adding actual water to it so that the paint is thinner and it spreads easier as well so that's what you see me doing is adding some water to help spread that paint. If you don't add water to it, your colors will be brighter. If you do add water to it, then it's um, thinner. It, it looks um, like more watery, basically. So I'm, at, I'm also adding some white to it and a little bit of water as well. Then I'm mixing my green. I'm mixing my blue and my yellow to get to green. And I'm doing the sides. So I'm doing the um, the right side and I'm going to do the yellow side. Green. And again, whatever colors you desire. I'm also adding some water into the green as well so that it blends easier with the blue. Uh, the water helps it blend more. And then I'm also, if you look closely, I'm also kind of turning my brush as I get to the water so that it gives it those rugged lines. Um, so it looks like everything is kind of going inwards. If you need um, help like mixing colors, um, 
there is a color theory card in your box where it shows like, okay, how do I get to purple? How do I get to pink? How do I get to orange or teal or whatever color that you uh, want to get to? And then here I'm just dabbing the brush for like a bush look. Um, I know I said earlier you can use the foam brush, but you can also use the wash brush to um, just kind of dab in that area to give it a um, like a bush feel. So here I am mixing my colors so that I can get to like a gray color because I want my bridge to be gray uh, made out of steel, like made out of concrete and, and something that shows stability. That's what I want for my life. So that's why I chose a steel bridge for, for me. And that's personal to me. So you can choose whatever bridge type of bridge you like. Um, but yeah, I chose a steel one. And so I mix black and white to get to that gray color. Um, and here, again, don't have to be so perfect on the edges because and the um, next steps, we're going, we're going to outline it. And then once we outline it, it'll cover up um, any mistakes that you made on the edges. So now I'm taking my detailing brush, the smaller brush, and I'm going over the outline in like a black or like a dark gray so it can kind of stand out a little bit more and I'm outlining it. And you can just take your time with this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The point of this is to paint. The point of this is to release and take your mind off of whatever it is that you need to take your mind off and putting it all onto the canvas, releasing everything onto the canvas. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So that's my bridge, but you can take it a step further and put like a rail. So I just put one line kind of following the flow of the bridge. And then once you have that line, then you can make little smaller dashes, like just lines going straight down across. So that's my bridge. Once you have your bridge painting, the base of their painting, then you can move on to the card and follow the steps. First step is on the left of the bridge, you wanna include what you're leaving. On the right on the br of the bridge, you wanna show where you're heading. Under the bridge, you can put like your um, obstacles and things that you've encountered along the way or things that you're currently going through. And then once you're done with that, you can name it you can, or you can add yourself into the, into your painting. You can use a dot. You can put a stick figure. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but this is like a timeline, a bridge to kind of see where you're at in your life. And then you can answer the prompts, the prompts where, what has prevented you from overcoming these challenges you've identified so far, the things that's underneath the bridge. How significant are these challenges? What are five steps that you can take to overcome these challenges? So these are things that you can look through inward and to yourself to do some self-reflection about your journey in your life. 